Hello, and welcome to Keep Hope Alive podcast. Today, we have a wonderful show for you. I got Jordan Taper here with us. He is a writer and a director, and we're going to be diving into his story. Welcome so much for being on Keep Hope Alive. Thank you. So really quick, um, this show is brought to you by lifeonrecord.com. So usually at weddings, when people are getting married, going into the ceremony, whether it's a church or outdoors, a lot of people will use guest books. The guests will go, sign their names, say they were there. And I mean, there's so many different options today, but this is a great option. Life on Record gets rid of that guest book. And what they do is they have a vintage rotary phone that your guests can pick up and leave a message and say, congratulations, we're so happy for you. Or maybe it's like a groomsman going like, hey, dude, it's about time you put a ring on our finger. So when they are in that line to leave the message, I call it the gift of voice. They also have a QR um, scan code. So you can take your phone and scan that code and leave them a message either before or after on your own mobile device if you wanted to. Now, all, after all these messages get compiled, they will either burn it on a 12-inch vinyl record for you, or they have a keepsake speaker. That's really cute. I call it the boom box, and you guys would get that. Their plans only start at $99, and you get this phone number. You have to reach around the phone, but you get the phone number for a year in case anybody else would like to call in and leave any more messages. And I think it's great for weddings. You can say two months before you know, call back, wish us a happy anniversary and collect more voice messages. Because I'm telling you right now, when you are sitting there and you're listening to your friends and family, you're going to have a big smile on your face. Now, this goes good for any event. So have fun with it and be creative. Check out their website at www.lifeonrecord.com. So, Jordan... You're a, a writer, a director, but who is Jordan? Um, so I have been walking with Wisconsin my whole life. Um, since I was probably 14, I've always wanted to be a teacher, be in education. So I've had different teaching positions over the last few years. Things were a little were a little different, you know, in the middle of the pandemic, obviously, but I stuck with it and I've been I've been in different schools, have different teaching positions, and I've always loved anything having to do with being creative. I've always loved music and movies and TV, and then did some writing for in high school for fun, and then and then did a little bit of creative writing in college. And I just have always wanted to write my own stories, and I have free time. And in the fall of twenty twenty, and I don't, I don't know if the pandemic had anything to do with this, but I just decided to have a few stories. I'm going to try writing. I don't think it's going to be any good, but I just want to write them and see what happens and maybe share them online and just see what people think. And that's kind of how I started writing my first story um, in the fall of 2020. And I was like, I was like, oh, this is good. And then, and then in the spring of 2021, I went back to it. I'm like, okay, this is good, but I feel it could be better. And more than anything, I want to have a really solid ending. So I kind of re revised it a little bit. And then I was like, wow, this is really something. I want to, I want to share this. I want to, like, I want to find a way to, um, like, make an animated web series on this. Find animators, find voice actors, voice the characters in my story. But that would take three years to get one series done. And most importantly, that would cost a whole lot of money that I don't have. Um, so I did research and I was like, oh, I can make an audio book or audio drama, some anime series. That's a lot easier. I can do it basically for free. So I did more research and I found this site called Casting Call Club. And it is a godsend for anyone who wants to create something creative. So I found out how to find voice actors, look in their demos, say, wow, this part of their demo would sound great for this character I want for my story. I would contact voice actors, say, hi, I'm Jordan, I'm a writer, and I want my story to become an audio drama or audio book. I was wondering if you, I heard your demo, you sound great. I'd like 
to see maybe if you'd like to audition. And they would say yes. I would list all the auditions I would get, cast the ones super best fit, and then work with them on a weekly basis from there. But I did that. The story was called Zane the Demon Prince. And I was so proud of it when I wrote it. And then in like November 2021, the audiobook was completely done. And I was trying so hard not to cry because of all oh, you emotions. should cry. That's a um, big accomplishment. I, I mean, love that. It's a, it's so funny at the time because I've done eight audio books, audio genres we can talk about in the last um, a little over two years. And I just started the production for my ninth one now. Um, and it's funny at the time, I was like, oh, I'm, like, I'm close to crying because it's funny because most of my stories, I tell people, uh, get the tissue boxes ready. They're very emotional and real and rocks. That's what I was going for. Um, for all of them. I want I, I just to feel something and feel what like the voice actors voice and the characters feel with their forms of being so authentic and real. And I love that. Then I wrote another story, turn that to an audiobook, did another one, and I just I just kept going. I didn't stop because I love the stories that I wrote. I love the process is very it, it's very long. It can get kind of tedious. Yeah. Um some audiobooks were done at a much slower rate than others because people dropped out. They got sick, got busy with their own lives and work, which I get. Um, this last one I did, it's called Fight On. I started, I finished writing it the summer of last year. And I thought it'd probably be done in October. The audio book be done in October at the latest. It actually got done December 3rd or something because I went to like four different audio engineers because that's really the hardest part is find an audio engineer to put all, everything together. All the character files with the voice actors, do all the music and sequence it so it sounds cohesive. That's probably the hardest part. I think, honestly, voice acting was wow. one of the easiest parts about me being a director because I don't really have to direct voice actors that much because most of who I've worked with are so amazing. They're either just starting on their journey, and I direct them a little bit, but once I tell them what the characters are like, they can go from there because they already have a pretty good idea of the characters like in the audition. Um, some are kind of are trying to get into the official voiceover industry. So they have training and all of that. You can tell right away. And then some actually work in the industry. They work, they get paid for things, and yet they still find time to work with me on these in unpaid passion projects. So I just, people say, that the, people say that the acting bug, I'm the opposite. I'm the, the writing bug, and I just kept going. I didn't stop. I wasn't planning on being a director, but I love it almost as much as I love writing now. Wow. So, you know, it's kind of like the saying, you know, for the industry that I was in, you know, you're either a teacher or the planner, like a wedding planner. So I think J-Lo said it the best for those who don't teach, they plan. And that was in the wedding planner movie. I was like, she's absolutely right. But it's funny. Like you say, you're a writer, but maybe later on in life, you're going to change over to a director. And you know, you never know. Because, yeah, I went from wedding planner to photographer, you know, I was just like, wow, that happened quick. Photographer to podcast. So it's like a different season in our lives. And as we go through it, we follow our journey and what we're set out to do. So it sounds like you have a lot more ideas for books to come out. So that is really cool. And, you know, you said you were interviewing what are some things that you look into when you're creating this character, you know, and you want to hear the voices, the you know, auditions from the voiceover people? Is it, are you listening to 10, 15, 20, 50 of them? I mean, how's that process work? Um, so depending on how long the audio, the audio book will be, how long the story is that I've written, becoming an audio book, audio drama. Um, I, I like what well, there's some that I listened to probably 80 auditions. Um, oh, wow. this one, Runaway, uh, th that I'm doing now, it the story is called um, Runaway Samurai, and I wrote the script and the audiobook to be um, it's in post production now, and I'm kind of directing everybody about how I want them and, and the audio jurors, I wanted to make, go together. So, hopefully, they'll be out probably May. Um, that one I think had 140 auditions um and i said yeah and i said that i'd rather have that many auditions than not have enough because if i thought i didn't have enough i just can find the right voice for a character and if i didn't have enough and if 
you know, the, if the deadline was coming up and, you know, it just kept going on, dragging on. I think by the way, what I tend to go with what I had, you know, wasn't the best. So I'd rather people get yeah. a lot, free sending a lot of money. So these people would, but I think that's why, because some people would send in like 40, like four or five different people would each send in like five to seven auditions for five to seven different characters. And I had to multiply all that. And again, that's fine because that means one, that I have a lot of different options, you know? And yeah. Then two, and then two, that means a lot of people are interested in being part of this. But it's a main character or a really tiny minor character. Like, Fight On, the last one I did, and then this one, Runaway Samurai, have more extra and more minor characters on like four lines than ones I've done in the past. Um, it's more of a full ensemble cast, which is why it took so long, why I have so many auditions. But people who audition for the main characters, I probably feel like would be better off as this character who has just, who's barely in it. But as a director, I realized just put all these tiny, the tiniest puzzle pieces have to fit because I want all my item looks to sound cohesive. I don't want to listen to me and think, wait, shouldn't there be someone here to say this or say something to, to bring these moments together? Even if that character doesn't have a name, even if they're, like, they really don't have a name. Like, by the way, Sam Riders, email librarian male bank teller, female reporter, but, uh, you know, female cashier. But if they're not there, I would I would need something to fill in those gaps to fill in the plot of what's happening. So I needed to put those characters in there and find people to voice them. The same people voice for the male lead and the female lead also voice for those minor characters and they cast them. So it's a lot to do, but I feel like it's just what any other director who works in the official industry has to do. Um, yeah again, definitely yeah I'm again I'm, I'm I'm more than happy to listen to all those auditions because that means that people are interested in working with yeah me and I, I'll take what I can get and that's awesome it's so if you know people listening to this podcast you know yeah, how would they reach out to you if they ever wanted to audition I can't even talk see there's the first grouper audition for you <laughs> so I'm um, so, um, casting hall club is the best way um so I go there and I've used them now for over two years and it's the perfect way to find what you're looking for whether you're looking for a voice actor or you're looking for a director um a writer a singer an animator it's all there and so I put I create a project and I say like who I am what the story is about and then they can find the characters that are in there. And it, it's um, it's like I find the characters, their names, their personalities, what they're like, what kind of voice I'm looking for. It's kind of like the auditions that I can see for a play or a TV show or a movie. It's, it's really similar that way. And then I just, I send it out there. And then what I do is I, um, on Discord, I'm a part of a couple of Discord servers that ha that are like, well, there's the Casting Call Club Discord server and a couple others that, are all about people who are creative, all about voice actors and writers and everybody. And then I look through all the members there and I find links to their social media or to their demo reels because, you know, they're all sending out demo reels to people about the different voices that they can do. And if I like what I hear, I'll send them a message say, hi, my name is Jordan. I'm the writer. I wrote this story. I hope you can read audio book, audio drama. I have your demo. I think you sound great. And then I said, would you like to audition for any character you want? Sometimes I'll audition for two. Sometimes I'll just the main character and like the main villain, and sometimes I'll just for seven, you know. And it's all it's just what they want to do, and then I keep I keep that process going, and that takes a good can take up to a month to go through all the demo rules and yeah. all the actors that I want because I'm trying to get as many auditions as I can. So I'd much rather have 140 auditions than 14, you know, because I just force auditions. Well, first of all, for some stories, that's just not quite enough characters to based on the 14 auditions. And the last two ones I've done, a couple of people I have asked them to voice two small characters. So I just couldn't find people to fit those voices. And they said no problem. Like they're total pros about it. And so I kind of go through all these demo reels that I can find online. And I reach out to the people as I can. And then they either message me on Discord or Twitter or or reply to email I send saying, sure, I'd like to audition. And and that's how, and it just goes from there. And then once the deadline is, reaches the deadline of the casting call, 
by then I was looking through all the auditions for all the characters and figure out who is best suited for them for each character. That's sort of a message saying congratulations. I like you to voice this character. And we kind of go through the post production of them submitting their audio character audio files from there. That is awesome. So I did a podcast, of course, it's on my website. I cannot remember what season though, but it is called The Viper. And he does um voiceover. And I think he knows about 91 different voices and different sounds and stuff. And I mean, I just call him Shaggy because when I met him, he wouldn't talk normal. He was just talking like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo and he was on cue and perfect. So, (laughs) but definitely it sounds so fun what you do and I can tell how passionate you are about these projects. So you're really not only writing, but you're creating and organizing and planning. This is how it needs to be. This is my vision. And you're setting out forth to make it happen. So having that energy is amazing. You should be so proud of yourself. And, you know, I can't wait i want to get one of your books already and i want to read it and you know see and if you ever need a voiceover no kidding <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it, i'll mess well, it up don't well, worry it, it's funny you mention that because i have no aspirations to be a voice actor myself i much rather be behind the scenes as a writer and a director i love voice acting i love voiceover i love what people can do with their voice to bring a character life just like live action acting or you know or the kind of cartoons animation i grew up watching now I'm kind of doing that with these voice actors. And and even I am proud of the stories I've written and I'm proud of the audiobooks being made, but I really want to emphasize that I want to give all the credit to the voice actors because they, mm-hmm. if you heard, if you get a chance to hear one of my audiobooks, you'll know like they give everything they have. They are so amazing. And like with the deliveries and reactions or moments where they're crying their eyes out or moments where they're screaming in anger and rage. That's again, that's so real and raw. And that's what I was looking for. And and they they bring it every time with each one of the iBooks I've done. So I just want to give them all the credit. I mean I know I wrote the story inside of this, but I could just written stories no with no audio nothing and share them online and be proud of them. But I really want to give the voice actors all the credit for what they've done with me and working with them because it's been so much fun and so exciting to hear what they bring to the characters in the stories that I write. That is awesome. I don't know, like for me, even though I do podcasts, it's the weirdest thing. I don't want to listen to my voice. (laughs) Like it's the weirdest thing. And I was like, no, I don't need to watch me. And I thought it was funny that my boyfriend called me the other day. And he was like, can you quiet it down? I go, what? I said, hi. Well, he was listening to my podcast, but he never turned it off and did the call. And you know how sometimes that interacts. (laughs) But I was not really saying anything. I was like, oh, I caught you listening to my podcast. And he's like, oh, yeah, it was just in my ear. <laughs> so, but you, you, do you like sit back and listen to your audio book? I, lis- I listen to them all the time when I have the chance, you know, I because I'm just, I'm so proud of all of them. And Yay! again, I just want to listen to all the amazing voice actors I work with and hear what they did. It, it kind of takes me back to when, the first the first time I heard like um all of it put together because I mean I'll listen to every chapter episode when it's done of everyone's voices and the audio all together um but listening to the whole thing beginning to end really takes me back to when the whole thing was done all the hard work that they put in and that I put in everybody put in was worth that so I still listen to all of them when I get the chance to Oh, wow. That is beautiful. I love that. Hey, just really, really quickly. I got another question for you. You ready? Mm -hmm. Do you know what these are? Oh, I've seen those on Facebook. On Facebook, of course, yes. (laughs) These are called Snap Bands. And really quick, they're one of our sponsors for Keep Hope Alive. This pink one says Faith. And 
there's a story behind that one. So you can only get the word faith on their bracelets if you put in the promo KHA for Keep Hope Alive. So it's a special one, but, you know, definitely. And they come in all different colors. But really quick, I want to edu educate you guys on this stuff, as I can't say educate. <laughs> I sound all Texan, don't I? <laughs> So the world is a stressful place for everyone with work, school, relationships, health issues, finances, the nightly news. There's anxiety every day. Negative thoughts can keep popping into your head over and over again. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy for anyone loving me. Bad things always happen to me. So if you ever had these types of thoughts, you're not alone. More than 40 million Americans are diagnosed with anxiety disorder. Anxieties, worries, and fears can stop you from finding inner peace and achieving your true potential. You deserve the best life. So finally, there's an amazing new bracelet called Step Bands that was invented to help you reduce anxiety, control OCD, and calm stress. Snap bands are cognitive behavioral therapy tool based on a proven brain neuroscience and the way snap bands works is amazing. And I've had mine for a month and I love it. So with snap band bracelets, they look like a stylish piece of jewelry on your wrist, but its unique design actually hides a secret elastic band that sits right on your inner wrist which is a pressure point to your brain's nervous system. When you give the elastic a light tug, you feel a very gentle, soft vibration on your inner wrist. A gentle physical sensation is all you need to do to reduce, to reduce the anxiety, and here's why. Did you know that the human brain can only deal with one emergency at the time? So with that being said, whenever you feel this unwanted negative thought in your head, you gently snap the elastic on your inner wrist and it forces your brain to refocus. And with their mantra words that they have, like it comes with seven, but eight with faith. And their words are believe, blessing, dream, fearless, hope, love, and peace. So when you snap that, I want everybody to think in their brain, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice, you know, change the words. Like, I have hope for a great day. I have faith that I am going to find a job soon. And you can actually hide your son doing this. It's like, hey, I got a nervous stick. I'm going to, you know, I can snap bands, two of them at the same time. I want both. <laughs> and I love it. So, you know, change his words to, I believe in myself. I am a blessing. I am fearless. I will always have hope. So they come in so many different beautiful colors. And then they're waterproof, which I love. I can wash the dishes, take a shower in them. And they're made by vegan leather. So if you have sensitive skin, it's not going to bug you one bit. So with every order of the snap bands, they give back to a um, leading mental health organization to snap out the stigma. So I want you to go visit their website at www.snapbands.com and that's spelled S-N-A-P-P-B-A-N-D-Z. So let's put it together and snap the anxiety away. <laughs> so Jordan, how did you like that commercial? Was that fun? I think it was fun. <laughs> so, but definitely. Now, with everything, you know, finding you on social media and, of course, you know, with the books, I have a storefront on my website, www.keephopealivepodcast.com, and I can add the link for our listeners to find it and go right to it, which would be good. So, mm-hmm. But other than that, do they find it just through a website or is it anywhere else that they can find? I, let's see, I have a Twitter. I'm on Twitter a lot, just at Jordan Taper. I don't have like a, any kind of funny username. I just know my usual name because it's easier. Um, and then, mm -hmm. on, and then Facebook, my name, and then 
and then uh, Instagram my name. But one way to find all the audiobooks in one place is a, a site that I don't know people know about or maybe people don't use them that much. I use them quite a bit in college from my classes about um, using like using, inter using internet technology to be creative for creative ways to do education, creative ways to teach when I was looking to get my bachelor's degree in education. And it's a blogger. And I'm trying to find the link I use. So if you go to blogger mm -hmm. and then and I can send you the link and then you can just share it with people. Okay. Um, um, let's see, which one was it? Um, like it's mine, it says Jordan writing and audiobooks. And oh, so view blog, there we go. So Jordan writing and audiobooks, you'll find all of them. I don't know if you can see. Oh, okay. You can, and then you see yeah, I'm going to definitely need that link. <laughs> yes, you can find all the audiobooks I've done and the um, also in there is the links to the scripts, the stories that I wrote so you can, because I like, I hope that people can read the stories and scripts while they listen to the audiobooks so they can, you know, keep up with that um, as they're listening to it. And then for some of them, you'll also find links to the casting calls that I made for them. And if you're curious about the my audio, my audition process, and how I found people, how I found the voice actors, you can find them there. Um, so yeah, and then also with that, I put casting call there because, um, again, I'm so proud of the stories I've written, but I want to give credit to all the voice actors. And the, this past year, I don't know where this came from, but I think when I was making my seventh audiobook, it was called The Animal Inside, and it was completely finished last this last summer, summer of 2023. And I thought, I've worked with so many amazing voice actors, some multiple times. I just love their voice and I love their work ethic and what they do. And I just like, I know how extremely hard the official voiceover industry is. Everybody wants to do it. There are some people who think they can do it, maybe not. Most of them, they get training, they do what they're supposed to do, they get practice, and they're also amazing. I know that firsthand. And I don't hear the voice actors I've worked with in like voiceover or or animation, you know. Um, this past year I have heard them in some animation that I that I know of and I would message them online like, hey, are you in this show that I heard? And they're like, Yeah, and I was like, that's amazing. I no, I'm not saying at all that <laughs> they got there because because of working with me. That's I'm not trying to say that. I mean, some have said they put links to the audiobooks that they're in that I've done with them on their resume and that helps because especially with them being so emotional and being all about the character. I think that will people will listen to that like, wow, this is a small indie project, but they're performing it like it's a real voiceover because of their tone and how much emotion they get to the character and everything. And that's what I'm hoping is I really want to shift the focus away from me and really shine the spotlight on them because they're amazing and I want to help them on their voiceover journey. It was just a tiny bit. I want to do something because I used to just mope around and be like, yeah, those people knew how how the voice actors were, and that because and I don't like it when people just complain about stuff instead of doing something. I don't want to be one of those people, so I had yeah. the same idea where I'm gonna not just share my audiobooks online, but share the voice actors I work with who are who work with me on audiobooks and get the word out to them, and even reach out to real animation studios that I know that I know as a fan of of shows that I love, and say, hey, my name's Jordan. I'm a writer. I've directed audiobooks. I've worked with these voice actors. They're amazing. Now, I did not ask them, please cast them as the lead in your next show. No, that's not professional at all. I asked them, would you consider having them just in the audition for anything? It could even be Walla. Just background yeah. voices. That's something, you know? Um, and voice actors have said that's really fun to do. As much as main characters, you can just kind of say anything as long as, for the most part, you don't swear. And if it fits the scene in, in the background. So I just, that's kind of what I've done off and on the past uh, almost year or so, because I just, they're just incredible and I just want to help them any way uh, that I can. So putting the casting call there, people can go back and like, oh, I love that voice, who is that? And they can go the casting call and I just go back to my audiobook or my project. They can go their link 
see their social media, see their hear their demo reel, hear the other stuff they've done. And yeah. And get their get their name out there more. So in like five years from now, we're gonna see more of you. I know that for a fact. <laughs> um I would like to because I just love what I what I do and it's such a passion. Um I did say to to somebody that when Runaway Samurai is done by this summer, it's probably May this year, I'm gonna take a little bit of a break from it because I've made audiobooks nonstop. This is my ninth one, nonstop for two and a half years. I'm not burnt I'm not so much burnt out. It's more of because I'm so proud of all of them. And there's a few I've done that I'm really like I put my whole heart and soul into to this, and I'm so proud of it. Yeah. Especially if it took forever to get made, and I think it was gonna get made, I didn't give up because I believed in it so much, and it worked out. Um, I just kind of need some time to kind of recharge my batteries because after <laughs> writing and directing nonstop, so it's not like it's not burnt out. Like I'm tired, I'm not inspired anymore. It's more of like I want to get re-inspired, and I don't know. Maybe I'll that might only last a month or so. I may start writing in the summer. I may not. So bring it to the fall, but like, I don't know yet. So, and I also I think, and I'm sure a lot of people feel this way because of the pandemic the last couple of years, is that I've learned to not worry so much about the future because there are times where I would worry about the future and where I would be at this point in my life and then it didn't work mm-hmm. out. And then I'd be really down on myself. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to, someone said a good mantra is just the fact that you woke up and you're breathing, you've won life. You may not be where you want to be in life or that people have a lot worse than you. So at times where I'm getting writer's block, I'm like, that happens. Like, it'll pass. And maybe I, maybe that's a sign. Maybe take a little break to get re-inspired again. So I don't think that far ahead, like five years. Like, I, the first I probably think ahead is probably five weeks. And it's not so much like what I want to do as a career or something. It's very practical. Um, mm-hmm. that's kind of where I am you see it took a little time for me My the podcast here has been going very well we're getting booked up but unfortunately the kind of person I am in life I'm a warrior a chronic pain warrior and it seems like every time I go to the hospital there's something new and it's just mind boggling but I had downtime from the podcast for three days and I couldn't get my laptop or I would have done a podcast there, which would have been crazy on my end in a hospital gown. <laughs> but however, um, I I noticed it gave me re time to think and build on to it. And I was like, I love my podcast and I want to do A, B, C, D, E with it. And I'm going to go for it. And then, you know, it was just one of those things, the creative mind and soul. Sometimes we need that break. And if it goes, for me, if it goes too long, I'm like, nope, I'm back at the drawing board. I'm going to start working. (laughs) You know, it's like being an energizer bunny. Even my sleep patterns have changed because if I can't get sleep from the pain, my head will think about everything during the day. And I want to create this business and this business and this business and let's go. And I was like, I just need like 10 clones, (laughs) right? So but definitely, so I I had the motto, even though I ask, where do you see yourself in five years? It's kind of like also at the same token, live day by day. We don't know what tomorrow brings and be grateful for what we have now that we woke up and we're breathing. I agree with you 100% on that. And each day is a story of our journey and i love that too i think we grow as time goes by but it stinks because my age you're a lot younger than me i'm 46 and it feels like the clock goes i was like it's gonna be christmas tomorrow (laughs) you know let me start saving money now you know so it's just weird to see that when we were kids we thought it took forever just to get to christmas and now it's like, uh, okay, why is it so fast? So the accomplishments and what you set out, you try to make them, but 
we're not superhuman beings. We can't finish everything in a day. And I kind of laugh at this. You know, I didn't know how to feel about this AI for this year, but I actually like it a little bit. I'm still growing to learn. To, it takes away some of my duties I want to do, but not all of them. And I'd like to use my own brain and my creativity for that. So, but I don't think authors should ever use AI. And I don't think students should ever write a report with AI. <laughs> You're like, you agree? <laughs> I agree. I'm not a fan. I'm not, this is probably the best one when I talk about it. Like, I don't agree to her that at all. Like, what what people what human beings do what we think with our brains what we feel in our hearts that comes out of real that could be creative writing like what i do even like like business writing or something like it's where, where if it's business writing you have to do research and all those things that's something that a computer could do but it's something that we think in our brains of what we want to do and i just and, and people like or especially like the ai for voice acting i don't understand that at all because most computers are going to see their sound like they may not sound like robotic computers like we usually think, but you can tell if it, even if it sounds like you, of course, you can tell if it's not, you know. Yeah, and I'm, just, I'm just not a fan of that. That's what I'm going to say because <laughs> it's as a creative person, I feel like that's just that's kind of taking away because I think being creative is something that we all want. It, to be it's a or, <laughs> brain, our brain is in use, and you know, that's what the story is about. So, yeah. So I can see how other people like yourself, you know, don't want to use it. And I don't blame you guys one bit. <laughs> so, but definitely. So we have all your social media info and you will get your stuff up there. And um, is there any advice you would like to give our listeners? You know, maybe they want to become just like you in the future and be a director and an author. What advice can you give them? Um, my main advice would be is to not listen to anyone who says you can't do something. They could be they could be your family or friends. They may not want you to get your hopes up and get disappointed. And you have to understand that, but at the same time, you still have to do what you want to do. And that voice inside is leaves a voice inside your own head. Like a few years ago, I thought it'd be crazy for me to create an audio book. You know, like how would I even do that when I said, okay, I'm not going to make an anime web series that time? I wouldn't be able to do that. Um, I could just write the stories. And I just have the passion for writing that passes us in college and then just share them online. But that is a crazy idea. Like, no, I want real voices. I want to work with voice actors, like directors on my favorite shows and everything, like in the real world. And I, that voice in my head kept saying it was a crazy idea, so I'm going to work. But I'm like, I'm going to try. And hey, if it doesn't work, I can just write just the stories by themselves. I can at least say I tried. And now I'm putting together my ninth audiobook in two and a half years, you know, in a little over two years. So just ignore any voices that says you can't do something. That the loudest yes. voice really is usually the voice inside your own head, even louder than people around you. I'm glad yeah, you voice. have a good support, you know, people around you. And, you know, even if it is people coming to you saying, oh, no, don't do that. You know, it's not going to work. Out. Don't listen to them. That's not your life. It's not their calling to make the decisions for you. That voice you hear, I, I just got done my last podcast. We were talking about the, vo the voice, you know, and I was like, they're there for us. They're our spirit guides, you know, I mean, they really are. Hey, this is going to happen. Like I get warnings before stuff happens. Like if somebody wants to hand me a gift or somebody's going to announce big news, I kind of know it before it even happens. And I'm like, oh, I'm preparing myself, you know, but whatever your heart and your soul and your little spirit God wants to tell you, follow that. It's intuitive. It's a blessing. So but really quick, Jordan, I wanted to thank our other sponsors here too that are with Keep Hope Alive. And remember, guys, if you have questions, 
for um, us, you could call us at 833-780-HOPE, which HOPE is 4673. And I'd be more than happy to give Jordan the messages for him. And we will get those answered for you right away. Now, um, as I mentioned, we had lifeonrecord.com, your interactive guest book for events. We also have snapbands.com that help reduce any anxiety, OCD, um, I'm going to say PTSD. I mean, it's helped me I have medical one, you know, but I'm like, oh, please don't let me hurt today. You know, I'm always saying something like that, but they're great. And remember that promo code. If you want the faith one, it has to be K-H-A for the faith um, snap bands. Then we have Ogden Ventures LLC, Mr. Marcus Ogden, who was a former NFL player, he is now a keynote speaker, best-selling author, and podcast host. Please check out his work at www. And Marcus is spelled M-A-R-Q-U-E-S. Then his last name, Ogden, O-G-D-E-N dot com. And then check out his football stats. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Our next one is bridalshowsinc.com. If you are planning an event in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and we have people from all over the United States come to these. They host about like maybe um, five to six different trade shows through the year that you can meet vendors, see what they're showcasing, and maybe get pricing and get them booked right away for your events. So check them out. Our next one is Miles at SmilesEvents.com. Ms. Deborah Rose, her background is investigator. She's the nicest person you'll ever meet, but very truthful. That's what gets her her business. She's a handwriting analysis and a lipstick reader, and she is correct. For me, I've seen her with other people in action and events, and she's 100%. She is the real deal, so check her out. Our next one is Bryce Harney at www.brycemagic.com. You've probably seen Bryce on TV. Right now, he travels across the United States putting on shows. It could be corporate, church groups, birthdays, whatever the occasion. He is an amazing magician and mind mentalist. I would say go to YouTube. Look at Bryce Harney and watch some of his ads. <laughs> Our next one is richmondpunch.net. And Richmond graduated from the Juilliards. He's a violinist. He's been playing for over 30 years. He's performed in front of a million people and also had two slots on Lifetime shows to play background violin music. Our next one is TK Hair Salon at www.tkhairsalon.com. If you need a great haircut and live in the Texas area and around Plano, come check them out. They do hair dyes, updos, they do facial, everything, and they're amazing there. So just remember, guys, wherever you can find your podcast, you'll be able to find Keep Hope Alive podcasts. Like I mentioned, we have the phone number you can call in. We are about finishing up season 14, which is amazing, jumping into 15. If you would like to be a guest for Keep Hope Alive, send us an email. We also, on the website, have a guest intake form that you can fill out, and we'll get you booked right away because everybody has a story, and it can be shared, and we can all learn something from it. And I, I just want to thank you, Jordan for coming on to the show today and giving us that education. I loved it. And the one thing I'm going to tell you, right when you first started talking, I was like, boy, this, this guy has energy and it's so positive and good. And he treats people right is what I was picking up on you. And the more you talked, I saw that and you're passionate about your work. And I love that too. So I just want to say it was a true blessing having you here to talk about everything that you do. Thank you. Oh, you're Thank welcome. You. Well, guys, until our next show, love and light and see you guys later. Bye-bye. <laughs>